What's going on and welcome back to another less than 10 minute gear review and setup and in this video we're going to be going over the London Bridge blowout med kit. Now this guy's going to cost you roughly around 85 bucks. It does come in a couple of colors and camo patterns. From what I've been told I have the Medal of Honor Project Honor camo version of it. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. I didn't even know. I was just like oh yeah I have all these med kits thrown in a duffel bag in the back of my vehicle for you know, in the event I came across some type, some type of situation where I need to employ these, which is going to kind of highlight here at the end of the video where I think some of the downfalls for this pouch are. So with that, I'm not going to hold you up. I'm going to dive right into it. We can talk about a lot of that stuff at the end. Uh, so that way you can see how this thing is set up and configured. So configuration wise, you do have about four inches of elastic on the front side, which protects your little pull tab. For this guy right here, you have the wires on either side, both left and right, and then you have a little bit of Velcro on the interior and then your pull tab. And that just sits and Velcros in place and then goes through all of these loops. And I'll show you how to set that up and configure it towards the end of the video um, once we get all the contents thrown inside of it. But that's what the front looks like. The top or the opening is where you have all of these loops and that wire goes through to hold everything in place and hold things closed. And then on the back side, you have your molly and then you also have these belt loops. So you can set this up and configure it in a couple of different ways, whether you wanna throw it you know, on the back of a headrest in a vehicle, you wanna molly it to your kit, whether it be a belt or plate carrier or a cummerbund, you can set it up on your standard belt. So you have a couple of different options as far as configuration goes for this guy, which is nice because options are good. So. Uh, with that, typically the ones that you're going to see straight from the store are also going to have a cross or medical cross on the front of it. I cut them off because it just didn't look great on the camo pattern, so uh, I don't have them on there. Plus, these all sit in a bag in the back of my vehicle and they don't really move. So um, it's the bag is easily identifiable and that one has larger markings on it for medical use. So uh, didn't really need them on this. So with that, as far as opening it goes... You'll just pull this little tab out and then you just pull nice and hard on your pull tab and then that will open up the pouch itself like so. Interior wise, you do have quite a bit of space to be able to tuck all of your stuff in there. Uh, when it comes to setting up and configuring your med kit, I would highly recommend vacuum sealing or buy pre-vacuum sealed med kits so that way you kind of have the tray that that unfolds into to be able to work off of and keep things organized. That way you're not yard selling all your medical supplies out everywhere i just don't have it set up in that configuration right now so that way i could do the video and uh save some time as far as that goes so that's what this guy looks like beforehand but before we get into all of this and set up in configuration i will say before i get into it i am missing a few items on this i don't have a nasal pharyngeal and i don't have chest seals so that is something that you could definitely add to the list of things to throw in here and then if you want to what you can do is you can actually take hair ties and then this pull tab system and as you run the pull tab system uh, through these loops you can add your hair ties and then hair tie a uh, tourniquet to this as well if you put the tourniquet inside of it it just takes up way too much space and you can't fit all your medical supplies in so i would definitely recommend configuring you know either the back of this or the top of it in a way that you can set up uh, tourniquets on here uh, it definitely would not be hard to take hair ties, loop them through these big loops right here, and then that way you have a uh, tourniquet on either side and then still be able to you know, molly this or do whatever as far as setup and configuration goes. So uh, with that, when it comes to the setup and setting these things up on your actual you know, vacuum seal bag, make sure you have three sides of the vacuum seal bag set up, and then you just neatly tuck everything in there. Um, say if this is your vacuum seal bag tuck everything in there make sure it's nice and organized and then you vacuum seal the top of it and then that way you can just slide the entire med kit inside of this pouch um, versus just what i'm going to do tuck and throw everything inside of here so uh, with that when it comes to everything that you need i did you know make that point have a nasal pharyngeal have a chest seal have tourniquets with all of this but everything else that we have we've got some compressed uh, four inch by four inch gauze definitely have a couple of those those are good to have combat gauze it's definitely a must and then we also have some compressed gauze both rolled and kind of the more uh, xylophone shaped version of it and then also your ace wrap this is really nice to have when it comes to help dealing with bleeds and applying pressure to that uh, injury 
to be able to slow that bleed as much as possible. In addition to that, we also have just a little small triangle bandage to be able to sling things and uh, mobilize things so that way they're not causing further injury to themselves. Uh, and this can also work as you know an additional tourniquet or presser dressing depending on how tight you can get that. Uh, adding sticks or hey, even if you wanted to, an improvised tourniquet, throw some cleaning rods in here for you know an M4 or a 762 platform that will give you enough to be able to twist everything and create you know an improvised tourniquet with that. Uh, we do have the needle decompression and this is why I also talked about having those chest seals on there or in the kit. Having those chest seals will make utilizing this a lot more uh, feasible, I guess you could say. And then we also have both alcohol pads and iodine pads. I uh, usually have a few more than this, but for right now we have that. Some bacitracin, some Tylenol to be able to deal with pain and antibiotic stuff. And then in a pinch, if you don't have chest seals, duct tape, and then even just a plastic bag like this, you can cut this plastic bag to create two seals and then you just tape those seals to the chest. So that is one way that you can do an improvised chest seal. Uh, and then inside of this bag, I also have a space blanket to deal with hypothermia. So that way, uh, when you're looking at the entirety of the med kit, you're covering down on all those ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation, um, and then that massive hemorrhaging. Or if you also look ABCs or <laughs> you also look at March, forgive me. Uh, March is the big one that they're using now. Uh, massive hemorrhage, airway, respirations. Uh, circulation and then hypothermia or hypothermia prevention um, so with all of that you have all of that material all of these components that you can throw inside of this med kit so what that may look like throwing the larger items down at the bottom and then some of the smaller items up at top like I said earlier though I would definitely recommend you know vacuum sealing all of these items in one pouch so that way when you pull all of this out you have a little tray to work off of but for now this definitely works so once you get all of that stuff in here it's all nice and tight and then gloves, protect yourself from any bloodborne pathogens or anything like that. This is where you can definitely set up the tourniquet. So as you're feeding the wire through these little loops, you could add those hair ties in between the loops to be able to hold a tourniquet. And then you'll just do the right side and then the left side. And then that way everything is all configured. Uh, so I'll just finish this up real quick so that way you can see it complete. All right, should be about there. Awesome. So once you get to this point, that is all closed up. Um, and then you simply just take your pull tab and then tuck that into that elastic flap all the way down so that way it's at the bottom and that way when you need to pull this you're just pulling it straight out the bottom or you can push that tab out the top and then pull it out the top now with that when it comes to this med kit as much as i do think this is a good med kit it's very easy to you know protect your medical supplies as well as employ them there are some downsides with the employment side of it i typically gravitate more towards kind of like the roll one from Pharaoh concepts or the AWS med kit that they have where you have the ability to pull an entire organization tray out of the left or the right of the pouch and this is more so just a sleeve holding all of your contents I prefer that because I don't have to take my kit off I don't have to take my belt off I can just you know pull that out off the back of my belt and employ those medical supplies and provide you know, that self-aid or buddy aid, depending on what is going on in that situation. With this and the way that I've seen a lot of guys have to employ this is they have to take their entire belt off to be able to employ their med kit. So they have to unbuckle the belt, pull it off, pull it all the way around, and then open everything up. And, you know, if you have a very serious bleed, you that could cost you some time and potentially cost you your life, depending on how serious that bleed is. Now, most of the time... For me and the guys that I work with, we run our tourniquets on the front of our belt. So we have a belt 
mounted tourniquet and then we also have a tourniquet that is mounted to the bottom of the plate carrier or tourniquets mounted to the light to the right and to the left of the magazine panel on the front of the plate carrier that way you can employ those med kits or I shouldn't say med kits but tourniquets from both sides of the plate carrier or from the front of your body to whatever extremity needs them and then you're just pulling the tourniquet out of the sleeve so to speak that that med kit is being retained in this does take a little bit more time to employ so that is kind of the big downfall to it um, as much as i do think this is a really good product and well constructed and well thought out uh, there are a few downfalls with it in that regard so i may be nitpicking but hey you know seconds matter when you're injured and the faster you can get everything employed and the faster you can provide self-aid and buddy aid the better so with that if you have any questions please feel free and ask this is the way that a lot of the guys that I work with run their med kits. So uh, if you have any questions, I can definitely convey those questions to the guys that run it this way and provide you better answers if you are you know, questioning anything when it comes down to it. So with that, if you have any questions, please feel free and ask, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.